Okay, so first of all, I have air samples here and their longitude and latitude coordinates. And I also have their dichloromethane concentrations. And I want to filter this data and then plot it on a map. So the first thing I am going to do is to plot the unfiltered data. So I'm going to select the longitude and latitude coordinates and then insert a scatter plot. I'm going to cut this and scroll back up to the top and then paste it at the top. The next thing I am going to do is to copy this image here. This is just a picture I got off the internet. I'm then going to go back to this chart and while it is selected, press Control 1. Then I'm going to make sure I have the plot area selected and go to Fill and Picture or Texture Fill and then Insert Picture from Clipboard. And as this image here was the last thing that I copied. It was what was on my clipboard, so it's inserted into the background. Now I'm going to delete the title and the grid lines. Then I'm going to edit my axes so that they match the map in the background. So I'm going to change the latitude to minus 110 and the maximum to 100 and the major units are going to be 20. Then for the longitude I'm going to change this to minus 210 and the maximum will be 190 and the major units will be 30. And now that I have the axes the way I want them to be, I can delete the labels. Then I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And now I have the map, I can create my filtered data set. I'm going to do this using equals filter. Then the array is going to be the whole of this table here. So I'm going to go control shift and right arrow and control shift and down arrow to select the whole of the table. Then if I scroll back up here, the criteria I want to filter on is the dichloromethane concentrations. So I'm going to use control shift and down arrow to select the whole of this column and I want to filter for values that are greater than 50. However, this isn't the only criteria I want to filter on, so I'm going to put this into brackets. Then I am going to insert the star symbol in here and then open another set of brackets and select the dichloromethane concentrations again. And this time I'm going to say if they are less than 100 and then close brackets and close brackets again. The star symbol is the multiplication symbol but it also works a little like the AND formula. So I am basically saying if both those things are true I want it to show me those values. So in this case I am filtering for values that are between 50 and 100 and when I press enter it will create the table for me. And if I scroll down slightly, you can see that the filtered table is smaller than the original table, so we know it's being filtered. Now, I don't want these numbers here to be hard coded in, so I'm going to put 50 here and 100 here. Then I'm going to change this formula. So this 50 is then referencing this cell and this 100 changes to this cell and then enter and it doesn't change the table at the moment because these numbers are still the same however if I change this here to 70 you can see the table updates and it's now only showing me values that are between 70 and 100 now I have the filtered table here I am going to add this onto my chart right click and select data then add the series name is going to be filtered data set 
then the x values are going to be the longitude coordinates and I'm going to scroll all the way down until I'm lining up with the bottom of the first table. And that is so no matter how big or small my filtered range gets, it will always include all of the data points. Then for the y values, I will have the latitude coordinates. And again, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And then OK and OK again. And if I scroll back up to the top, you can now see we have orange dots plotted over the top of the blue dots. So the blue dots are the unfiltered data set and the orange dots are the filtered data set. And if I change these values here, you can see that the table updates and it also changes the number of orange dots we have. So I can vary these numbers. For example, if I make this into 140 and this into 110, you can see that I only have four data points that fit this criteria. And they are the four highest values that I have. And they're all coming from this area here. Now, if I decrease this a little bit to 50, you can see that most of the higher values are coming from somewhere in the middle of the map. Now, if I change the maximum to 50, we get a calculation error because both of these numbers are now the same. This will also happen if the minimum value is higher than the maximum value. I can fix this by changing the minimum to 10. And now we can see that most of the lower values come from somewhere higher up the map. So in this way, I can vary these numbers to interpret my data set. OK, so in this video, I have shown you how to create a variable filtered range and plot it on a map in Excel. And that is everything.